Get Certified Together program is created by Technocofe, your free online knowledge sharing website based out in London. We will be planning probably after Christmas, uh, probably in the next year, because uh, till then we can simply cover these old domains and not all domains, but at least still cloud security operations. So after that, we can have one or two episode of discussion where we will be calling CCSP people who are already certified in CCSP before kind of like uh, really going into the final stage. Hello, welcome to another episode of Get Certified Together series. I'm recording episode number 40 today and it's really a big coincidence that by by the time I'm recording episode number 40, I have also seen 40,000 downloads for the whole series. So it's kind of a big number for me. Thanks all. Thanks. Thanks so much for listening and thanks so much for following this whole series. I know that uh, maybe some of the content is, is not that properly covered or maybe you can find much better content somewhere else as well. But I'm just doing whatever best I can do from my side. And if you guys are gaining anything from this whole effort of mine, then thanks for that. I really appreciate you guys come back and listen to all the episodes so first of all thanks for that like i said this is episode number 40 this episode is uh, supposed to be recorded in month of october but unfortunately i got chance to only record one episode in the october so we are kind of like a one episode due so i'll try to record at least three episodes in the month of november and my target is before christmas holidays we finish this domain which is cloud security operations completely and that will actually give us kind of like a, a good time to have more than 50 percent syllabus already covered so that's my plan i'll try to wrap that before the christmas holidays so be here with me and hopefully we will achieve that on another note i want to share something interesting with you guys I finally have done one of kind of like a first level of certification given by IC Square which is certified in cyber security. This is something I don't recall in in one of the previous episodes I told you that whenever you register yourself kind of like a first associate member first level member of IC Square they give you free coupon of uh, taking this exam. That's what I have got and I went for it and that was another reason that I was not able to code any episode in the month of October because uh, exam was on November 1st week so for the whole 15 or 20 days I was revising everything all the concepts around that. Good part about this certification is even the content for the certification is provided by IC Square so you can find free online training on the same website itself. And of course you will get a free coupon which on itself i think it's around 150 us dollars which is kind of like a big amount gone are those days when you can get your some ccna or some basic aws associate certificates in 100 150 dollars now range is way way higher and all good certification they start with 500 or 600 us dollars so this is also a good amount 150 dollars is a good amount and like i said it's a free of cost and you can get yourself as well the first attempt completely from the ic square side so I gave that exam, it was two hour long, I had to visit to a center. That's another challenge for me because uh, to be honest, this is the first time I am giving something face to face or something physically. Most of the certification which I have given till now, irrespective of the domain or technology, I have always given remotely proctored. So I am kind of that guy which is more, more habitual or more uh, familiar with the remotely proctored exam. but. Uh, I felt like I'm giving my driving license exam because I was reading about that center and it was same where they take driving license or all other exam of different organizations. A lot of people comes there on the same center. So I was the one who was giving uh, this certified uh, in cybersecurity. So it was two hour long, all MCQs, some of them were really beginner level. Some of them were tricky as well. And by by end of it, I was... uh, not really sure that I will be passing that exam or I will be failing. That actually 
tells you the level of the exam it's not really the beginner level so by the end of exam if you are really confident that you're going to pass that exam that means it's really easy but that was not the case with me i was still in doubt because again it was first time with ic square so we hear a lot about their way of marking and these advanced softwares of for changing the questions as per the answers someone giving in the real time so a lot of things are happening on the software on which you are submitting your answer so i was not really sure to be honest but yeah i passed it and one more thing which i happened to be experiencing for the first time was uh, not going back to the question i'm really I, i know this is something which i have to change my mindset now but i'm really um, into that way of for delivering the exam whenever i'm giving one exam i i always like to go back and get another look on all the answers which i have given if i have chance or if i have to give a second thought then i can change that answer maybe in second thought sometime you you click to the right answer because you are in a different thought process and then it's easier for you this is something which has been taught to us since uh, since childhood that uh, before submitting your answers just have a look on your answer sheet so that was my habit as well but it doesn't really work here in the in case of ic square where you cannot really go back there's no back button so if you submit an answer that's it you cannot go back and change it or you cannot go back and modify it so that's another thing which i was uh, kind of like facing it for the first time and but it, it was a good experience of course when i finally in the end of the exam when i get my result sheet it was a happy experience i was feeling kind of like satisfied with that because of course it's a beginner level exam and i'm not really into cyber security or i'm not really into cloud security but because of this podcast which i record every two weeks i have quite a good knowledge by now so maybe not in kind of like hands on experience but i have good uh, working knowledge to m- find my way around so it was not that tough for me but because it's a, it's a first level of exam and why i was really feeling happy because of uh, clearing this exam because once you pass that exam then you will be kind of like a proper member of the ic square so moment i passed that exam i got a not moment i think it's next day so or after 48 hours i can't recall now so i got one link which uh, actually have my certificate details and everything and on that link itself it was mentioned that now you are a proper member of ic square but before that you need to share your details you need to share your experience and everything and you don't need endorsement because this is a beginner level of exam this is for this you don't need endorsement of another ic square member or another certified person so it's not required you simply have to submit your details and they will make you a member of ic square so that's the big thing because now i am a member of ic square a proper member now i can see my cp portal as well where i can see if i'm listening to some podcast or i'm reading some book related to info security i can go and submit those details and i will be getting cp points so i have to get around 45 cp points in 3 years and uh, the webinars which i am attending or uh, any sort of project work which is a uh, unique in terms of info security or cyber security i, I can submit everything there it's not like no one will going to check those thing they clearly mention that it might be audited now and then so you have to be truthful you cannot just simply say that i'm reading a particular book and later you cannot prove that to be honest i i'm not sure how they really work out that part because if i claim that i have read some book and someone comes and ask me where is that book then i can simply say that i have sold it now so i'm not really sure how it really works but yeah uh, that's the cp portal that's the real reason of my happiness because now i am a proper full fledged member of ic square so that's the thing which i wanted to share with you guys uh, before we proceed with today's episode i am also planning to have another round of exp- part level discussion with uh, with some of the industry experts who have already certified themselves in CCSP so we have a couple of them before as well and something similar which we will be planning probably after christmas uh, probably in the next year because uh, till then we can simply cover these all domains and not all domains but at least till cloud security operations so after that we can have one or two episode of discussion where we will be calling CCSP people who are already certified in CCSP before kind of like uh, really going into the final stage of the whole syllabus and maybe having another revision session and then we can plan for CCSP as well but again that's for CCSP certified in cyber security which i have given is again i will reiterate it's completely free it's given by ic square so if you be an associate member please go with it it's not that tough you have to just learn all the concepts which they have given in, in their own documentation online which is free of course again and you can easily clear that and you can be a proper member as well you have to pay a uh, one year fees as well i have to remind that so i think i paid around 45 dollars for that but again that is kind of nominal if you are fully into this mindset that you want to be and be a member and you want to be in the cybersecurity so it's 
it's completely upon you but it's worth an effort and it's uh, of course uh, it's good to have that kind of membership so as you can prove that you are into this field all right that's it for introduction uh, let's begin with proper session of today's episode before that let's take a quick short break okay welcome back so we have already covered some of the topics of cloud security operations i think in last episode we covered something around different tiers of data centers different physical or different environmental factors which one must be taking care if they are deploying a private cloud or even even if you are running on the public cloud you have to be aware of those factors maybe you are not actually the end user maybe you will be hired kind of like an aws data center guy so you must be aware of uh, the, those aspects even though if you are working on public cloud as well you have to understand how it really works in in case of data center how those environmental factors those location humidity they affect a decision how our cloud security is there what kind of strategies we can put in place i think some of the concept which i forgot to mention last time but i can share now are around the badge process where you have a security badge who can access in or out or you can put biometric access doors on to your entry of data center so that's one of the one of the concept related to cloud security operations as well in terms of physical infrastructure or your data center so we have covered all these topics today we will be moving more towards the towards the actual operations of infrastructure which is in there so by infrastructure we can easily now understand what three components we are talking about we are talking about compute we are talking about network and storage let's begin with compute so compute again is kind of like a physical server you must be having big servers whenever you discuss about whenever you talk about cloud because virtualization layer which is running on top of your physical server must be able to support different virtual machines or different kubernetes or containers different clusters to achieve that you need those physical servers with the high compute power so maybe if you are really into big analytics world then maybe you are using gpus you are using nvidia drivers or even you are using high specs related to ram all these aspects are related to your physical server now whenever a physical server boots up it doesn't have an operating system by default right you will be putting something maybe ubuntu or maybe linux any kind of like linux distribution or windows server you need to put on top of that but something is booting up at the first place which is giving you interface to install your operating system that is bios so bios is basic input output system which is kind of like a emulator or kind of a, a very lightweight software which is coming by default on the physical server and that will actually boot up all the firmwares and that will help provide you a initial installation environment now earlier we used to have this legacy bios which was completely unencrypted and completely open to any kind of installation now we have more secure way of booting up or secure way of installing your operating system and we have this uefi enabled system so if you are not really into this physical infrastructure world or if you are new to that then ufe is another way of booting up your uh, uh, your bios or bringing up your initial se- initial server in an encrypted way so it's not like uh, it will first need some kind of authentication key i will not go deep into detail how it will really work but you can understand that if you are using a uefi enabled bio system then it will be more secure compared to legacy because it will be using encrypted communication between the source and between the server and different components which are part of that server on top of that you can also install trusted platform modules or tpm now role of tpm is something which is uh, really comes in handy if your server or if your physical device or even if your for example your laptop gets stolen or someone tries to hack into your server from bios or directly trying to read your encrypted disk then tpm is the system or t- is a chip on your microprocessor which can immediately shut down the whole infrastructure so your physical server will be triggered of a shutdown if it detects that there is something really wrong with the disk when someone is trying to do something which is malicious and which can lead to kind of like a security threat that's the physical infrastructure point of view what things we can do or to make it more secure of course uh, we have we have a kind of like out of band management network for all these infrastructure so be it network storage or even compute uh, remember i told you about different different networking planes control plane data plane management plane those are for the application level traffic or server level traffic but what if your whole front end goes down or what if your main network goes down or someone actually hacks into your main network then you need kind of like a back door to go into your server or to go into your machines 
and do some kind of like uh, basic at, at least basic level of troubleshooting get basic level of know event logs and everything or you can have kind of like remote console as well so we set up a different network usually which is out of band network to access that whole infrastructure from the back end and that is again part of like uh, it's more towards part of like your private cloud security but this back end or out of band management is really important to make sure that your uh, your servers are always accessible even though your main network was down now talking about network we have network controllers as well now network controllers are nothing but uh, equipments which you are using to manage your whole networking they can be part of the same box as well for example you may have some smart routers or some smart wap firewalls or next generation firewalls or you can have this software defined networking as well where your control or management plan is is sitting on a different box and your data plane or uh, virtual switches are of course running on a different box and you are controlling everything from a single management plane or a single management controller it's completely up to you how much money you have or how much uh, knowledge your networking guy have how much investment you want to put in in terms of setting up that networking infrastructure but networking controller or control of network is really important because in terms of cloud we are accessing everything from the internet right or uh, even though it's not on internet maybe we are accessing from vpn from our remote laptops in case of maybe private cloud my application is running privately on some uh, physical infrastructure owned by my organization which i want to access from my laptop it's completely valid use case especially after covid we have this remote work environments so i'll be accessing that infrastructure from my vpn everything is connected or everything is going via network tunnel or via some network equipment somewhere so that's why it's really important that we have to plan and design not only the kind of like scalability of that networking infrastructure but security of that networking infra as well now few important concepts around networking security or network security which i really encounter recently in one of, of my cyber security exam as well is around ids and ips which is intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system we i think read about it in comti exam as well so it's really just your softwares or your advanced agents or solutions which help you detect if there is something going wrong in the network if someone is trying to pull data from somewhere or if someone is from inside is trying to push data to somewhere or there is some malicious user which is not known a known entity which is trying to come in inside your application and trying to uh, run some commands or trying to do something you can detect it using these solutions that's part of your networking security infrastructure as well another concept which is uh, not really that expensive which is kind of like a, a day zero requirement which anyone should be following is segmentation your network should be always segmented if you have three applications running on to your server and then again you have four or five different kind of physical server then your these four or five different kind of server which is used by different teams or different departments should be having a different segment of network something similar will be there for application so application for different requirement should be having their own segment of network and i just now told you about out of band management network as well which is a completely different segment altogether so this segmentation actually reduce your surface area of attack if something goes wrong or some if you are one of the network or if you are one of the server is compromised if everything is unsegmented and everyone is using the same big block of network then it will be easier for anyone to get into the one system and then just find the way or find the path for other servers but if network is segmented then even though one part is compromised you still have other parts secure because they are in a different segment so that's why i said segmentation doesn't require a different solution and it's completely free of cost you just have to plan it out in day 0 itself now from network control we comes to another concept which is storage control now storage control it was not that relevant before or was not that important because we were having a single storage box with running a lot of hard disk or ssds and everyone was using that storage now we have more and more advanced use cases around our storage area network we are building big sans where all the physical server or physical entities infrastructure will be connected via virtual logical units to these back end block devices and accessing the storage which is somewhere inside your same premise as well but that storage will be having all the disks and all those physical infrastructure via the storage network will be connected to these storage disks and they will be using them as back end so it's kind of like a simple layman term of storage area network now something similar like what we discuss about network control as well 
this is something which is used by everyone we all who want to access some infrastructure we will be storing some files we will be storing some data onto it our application will be require some kind of backend to create databases or uh, even using it as their base os so maybe my libraries of uh, my application my processes my codes will be there will be will be required in some kinds of uh, storage system or storage backend and that's why storage management or storage manage operations security is now another big challenge because storage area network is um, if you think practically it's just a back end network and it's not coming in the front end or it's not accessible by internet it's something which is way behind your uh, all the front infrastructure it's something which is in the back end itself but still if it's compromised anyone can have access to all the files or anyone can have access to all the disks if you are using block storage risk is not really that someone will read your data risk is someone can hack into your system and they can encrypt your data and then will ask money to give their data back to you that's more risky because reading the file itself is is way tough now because of all these uh, default encryption mechanism because of uh, all the efforts someone have to put in to read the files it's easier to just get into the system encrypt those files and then ask money from the users that if you want to those files to decrypt it give, give us money so that's why storage operation security or storage control is really important now first of all we have to decide what kind of storage we want to use we can use block level storage or block devices or we can have object storage where my whole file will be stored as it is so my pdf my photographs my emails will be stored as it is kind of like a but random set of data block devices or block level storage is more uh, more kind of like streamlined all the information is first broken into blocks and then those blocks will be stored in the back end so it's of, of course completely depend on the use case especially in public cloud because in public cloud you clearly have two options of using storage you can use a block level storage or you can use an object level storage based on the kind of storage which you are using you have your own security risks and of course you have your own security operation mechanism for example object level storage it's way easier to read those because those are stored as it is as a file but it's really tough to hack into those system where you are storing your whole files because for example if you are storing something on public cloud aws s3 storage which is object level storage we don't know where the object storage are stored in the back end what at max anyone can do is they can somehow get hold of our credential our aws credential and get access to our buckets but they cannot really go into aws data center and find out where those files are stored so object level storage have this security risk associated with someone can read your data if you're not keeping kind of like uh, all the, your access to that data secure block level storage is more towards someone can really get hold of your disk because they are real disk which even in public cloud you can clearly see your storage volumes associated to your instances or, or associated to your virtual machine your containers and in case of private cloud those are kind of like real ssds which anyone can see anyone can plug in plug out in case of private cloud in case of public cloud anyone can detach it from your instance that's more riskier it's more riskier in terms of uh, someone can really impact your whole disk or someone can really make that disk itself unusable instead of uh, simply trying to read files they can they can have more more advanced level of uh, security threats if you are using only block level storage of course in case of uh, public cloud or even in private cloud we have option of using both and it's always good to have both keep some data on to the one type of disk and one data on another type of disk that's how actually we also do it as as a cloud architect we always suggest anyone that use different kind of storages now in case of private storages we can create a resiliency by having the raids so we can have raid 0 raid 1 type of mechanisms so as we can create multiple copies of the same file or we can create at least two copies of one file or we can even keep two files on different disks so we can put in lot of uh, different type of mechanism to make our on prem infrastructure or our on prem physical storage more usable or more resilient archiving and deletion is another key component because especially if you are keeping your data onto the cloud you have to make sure that you are tracking that information this is something we already read about in data life cycle as well if your data is not in use either archive it or delete it and where that data is stored or where that archiving will be happening again onto the storage so if you are for example putting some files on s3 buckets and you foresee that those files will not be required for another maybe 6 months or 1 year then just simply archive them 
if you keep them on the same bucket they are more prone to hacked upon or prone to attack as they are expensive as well because uh, aws will be charging more for that so you just archive those and store them somewhere into a different storage plan so you pay less as well and they are now more secure as well because aws will be ensuring that they are putting next level of security on some data which is archived they are not easily readable or they are not easily accessible now if you are not needing anything right away or you foresee that they are not required at all maybe in any future events just delete them don't keep them as it is because in public cloud it's easy to lose your data if you are not deleting them or you are not cleaning them properly from the disk and all this discussion around different storages or different storage networks networking control storage management processor multi tenancy is one thing which is always going to scare you when you're talking about cloud because all these three components which we talked about just now will be used by multiple different users at the same time so in terms of availability you have to make sure that you have ample resources you don't want your storage or you don't want your network to get overwhelmed because so many people are suddenly trying to access your application so if you are talking about cloud or cloud application remember one of the component of not cloud application or cloud security any kind of info security is availability in the cia trial so availability can be lost if your system get overwhelmed so you have to make sure in in case of like multi tenant environment you have ample number of resources so that your availability of uh, data or availability of information is always there in terms of access control all the equipments irrespective of their type so be it storage control or be it uh, networking equipments routers firewalls processors everything should be having a proper access control with them as well so access control is not only for applications which are running on to the cloud or applications which you are creating or your operating system which you are installing but access control of your for example your bios as well access control of your routers your switches or your storage management network who can go inside those system they should be also tracked they should also be kind of part of the same thought process where you have when you are planning your access control you should be planning if you are using for example active directory or you are using single sign on make sure that you are keeping everything part of that planning so you don't skip your physical infrastructure thinking that uh, someone is not logging into your router and firewall every day right but this still should be part of the same access control mechanism whatever you want to put in all right that's it for today's episode in the next week episode we will be covering next layer of the cloud security operations so something related to virtualization security as well as uh, sim and other solutions which we can put in place to monitor what is going in and out more towards ids ips as well a lot of interesting topics are coming up and like i said we will be trying to cover everything before uh, before our christmas holidays uh, not everything only uh, till this domain we'll try to cover everything till this domain before christmas holidays so we can go to christmas holidays with more than 50% of syllabus covered and then when we come back we will be wrapping up the remaining syllabus as well hopefully by march maybe we can have our ccsp and uh, by any chance if you get to look into this certified in cyber security examination then again i'm telling do go for it and if you have any challenges or if you want to ask anything around that then just give me a shout and I don't know where you can shout at me uh, maybe on Twitter or LinkedIn I'll put everything on my show notes so you can just come in there and we can ha- have a chat around that so uh, uh, I hope you all be IC square member soon like me and then we can continue our journey towards CCSP and more advanced things in the future all right thank you all goodbye and good luck thank you for listening to get certified together If you loved our content, then please like and subscribe from your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss the notification for our next episodes and announcements. At Highland, we're all about celebrating little wins and little ways to innovate digital processes. 
there's no customer pain point too small for us to help with. Maybe that's why more than half of the Fortune 100 looks to Highland to connect their content and data, improve processes, and turn little efficiencies into big wins for their customers and clients. Highland, intelligent content solutions for innovators everywhere at highland.com.